Good evening, all. I wrap scene, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to pass two nights to do the live webinar, uh, the these meetings for you, not the live webinar, the meetings for you. But uh, I'll cover that in a moment. It is about 6:10 p.m. Central Time on the 12th of April, 2023. This is the time of year where I see every doctor I have. I, you know, it's for everything. Uh, every year I do it. I didn't do it during the pandemic. Uh, it was just too difficult, so I missed one year. And but I do it. I go in. They they cut you. They take. I I'm so fair. If I go out in the sun, which I do, uh, you get basal cell issues, and they they just take them right off you, and away you go. Eyes get checked. Uh, you do all the things you have to do. GP. So it's everything. So yesterday my issue was I I had to do this later because I went to the eye doctor and they put in those drops and you know you walk outside your eyes killing you you can't see anything anyways and I had to wait so about six thirty I began I recorded three of them like an idiot my mistake. I missed hitting a button on our control center here and there was no voice. So I recorded all three. I wasn't going to redo them and start again at eight o'clock and get them posted at nine. Now I have a life too. Remember, I started at 3.34 in the morning. So I just said enough of it. And uh, we're here tonight. All right. I missed nothing with my paid subscribers in the morning. Now I want to remind you and give you this right now as we get to it. Before I cover all this for you, let's talk about my live webinar tomorrow. If you want to attend it and you're invited, it's free. And you didn't get an invite, just move your cursor up to the top here. And what do you do with that? From that point, uh, click it, fill out the form. You will get your user ID and password. If you have questions on ETFs or stocks, there's a, in the email that you'll be sent. You can ask them right there. I'll create the charts and away you go. We begin at 12.15 p.m. I open it. 12.30 on the head, I start it. I end 20 minutes later. I do not make a recording of this available on the website. I want you in it. If I'm making the time to do it, you make the time to join me. It's pretty fair. It's a two-way street. All right. So let's come back for a minute here and talk about what today was. I thought today's CPI reading was still quite the type of reading that gets the Fed to go another quarter point. I mean, okay, you took the headline inflation down from a year ago of 9.1% to 5%. It's been very orderly and it's come down. But you're still 5.6% on year over year. That's nowhere near the stated goal of 2%. It's three times the amount. And the low-hanging fruit has occurred. You've taken off of inflation the easy stuff. There's no ships lined up in the ports of Los Angeles and San Diego. Everything in the supply chain you need is mostly there. I don't know why computer chips aren't, but they're not. That's why the cars, the new cars, still aren't getting out there fast enough. But everything else is. Go to a store, they're well stocked. In fact, you're getting sales. They've gotten rid of merchandise they couldn't get rid of. And we're back to pretty much normal. If you're looking at retail sales, and I look at them every um Tuesday. We just had it yesterday. All right. We get the week to week numbers as to how sales are going. They're only running now a point and a half, one and a half percent above this time a year ago. We're back to normal. We're no longer 13% greater like we were, what, eight months ago, a year ago, because you couldn't have the stuff in the stores. Now everything's there. You're back to normal. That number might even go negative. You'll say why? Well, guess what? If the recession comes and the pressure, people feel it. Their credit cards get spent up and away you go there. But that brings me back to the CPI number. The CPI was down to 5% in part because of energy. Well, OPEC changed that game at the end of the month, and that's not in this figure. Are you looking at your gasoline prices where you're at? They're high. You're sitting here right now at 285 in this market. That's a sell-off. You were at 287. On February 6th, I put out my energy report, if you'll recall, and I was predicting come the spring, summer, you're going to take off in this market. Guess what? You have. And you're only at the very beginning of it. You got, I think you're at a 12-year low in gasoline stocks. I was laughing today at the forked tongue, because I'm not going to use the word liar, the forked tongue energy secretary who today is saying, oh, we may start buying uh, back strategic reserve oil sooner. 
her and Biden wouldn't know reality if it hit them between the eyes. They don't know what they're doing. Can I be any clearer? All right. I, I don't know what more to say. She is politicized. Yellen is politicized. Okay. I listened to Yellen yesterday, how bankers, now nah, they're, they're still lending. They're going to be quite aggressive in it. That's basically the words I interpreted that she said. Really? What planet is she? This was a woman that I had, I think she was a good Federal Reserve person. But when you become Treasury Secretary, you serve for the president. And your job is to say what he wants you to say, not your independence from the Federal Reserve. So I get it. When I take a look at the S&P 500 index, I look at the market, how it got up here, and it's backing off. But until you're back under 4,009, nah. The bias is to the upside. I looked at today's action, and I'd call this a failure. Why? Well, number one, it's a key reversal. What, what's the difference between an outside day and a key reversal? A key reversal makes a new high for the whole move, has a big reversal down. An outside day can happen anywhere in a move. I'm looking to see if we've got one here that I can... Here, here's an outside day down. That's not... New, that's not a new high or anything. That's the highest high of the current move. It has a bit more influence on the market. If that number is taken out on Thursday or Friday, I think you laid a bear trap and the market could surprise people to the upside. If it holds in place, then what? Well, if it holds, first thing I look at, the pattern has been one of consistently higher lows, higher highs, going all the way back here to the early part of March. If you took this out, 40, 96 and a half, be the first sign that this wave of the market has probably run its course. Second, if that's taken out, then comes into play the 40, 71 and a half zone, the 18 day average. I call it the line in the sand. Markets often like to go back there to figure out what to do. On a positive note, and I think this is important, let, let me get you to this. Remember when we had back here, and this was right here, Thursday, Monday, you had a crossover in the market. That was the 10th, all right? I wasn't here doing these for you, unfortunately, but that's a bullish crossover. Often that means the market's gonna try to make a run to make a new high on this move. Let me come back this way. There it is. There we are on the 11th. Here you are today. Bingo. And right down. All right. So that hit for me and completed for me at least what I wanted to see. You've already taken out the lows of Wednesday. So now I look to see where the market resistance is back at the 4,200 level on the Bollinger Band. I see that 4,072, 4,071 and a half, a potential support. And uh-oh, uh-oh, what's going on here? Well, let's again step back with my magic wand that I can do here. You had embedded readings, embedded, embedded. You had a fully embedded reading. If it stays lost, the word is if it stays lost, and any reading on a close under 79 tomorrow will be in my definition that it's lost. That's generally, and I, I want to use this word so strongly, generally means that the market's going to try to make a run to the 4071 and a half zone. All right. I don't know if it'll succeed with that or not, but that's what it often tries to do, and we'll see where that carries you. Sorry about that. It will go off. It's sitting over there on my desk. I thought it was in my pocket. I could have turned it off. That's right about where it's going to end. Okay. Um, so we got the higher highs, higher lows. And if this is lost, I look for that to be the zone. What about the NASDAQ? NASDAQ turned bearish. Get ready for the word. You haven't heard that in a long time. Bearish. You turn bearish in this market until this high is taken out. I'm looking for the 12,609 level possibility. What about the Dow? If it loses its embedded rating back here, but it hasn't yet. So it's fighting the first challenge of the 100 day average to see what it's made out of. I hate, and I, my traders know this uh, in my courses, I hate buying the first challenge of a 100 day average, even if it's embedded. 
generally it doesn't end up well. The same goes for the 200 on the upside or the downside. In the micro Russell, all you did is rally back to the upper Bollinger Band, boom. Did you take my Bollinger Band course yet? You're not embedded. Do you know what to do with that? Shame on you if you haven't. In the T-bond market, you've got a pattern setting up of lower highs, lower lows. Now, that would flies in the face of what the long-term people think. The long-term people believe that the Fed is within one to, within after the May, that they're going to stop raising rates. That is the common thinking at this point in time. In tonight's report that I sent out to my subscribers, uh, I showed the Fed watch page and what the percentages are for another rate hike after this. And right now they're at zero. So that changes all the time, but it's where you're at. Could we get down to the 13120 zone? Of course we can get there. We have to keep our eye to see what everything is going to do. If you close under 131, uh, 20, I think it's 26 is what that number is, then you open the door up for here. Right now, I don't know. I have the bias up since you're over the 18-day average, the market down. If, I'll give you a trap, this, this would become what's called a bear trap if today's high is taken out on either Thursday or Friday. If that is, this is an outside day, and if you're taking my outside day course, you learn this, the odds then favor you're gonna go back to the Bollinger Band. If it doesn't, the 18-day average is in play. If it takes that out, then you shouldn't revisit that low again. The course is only nine chapters. It teaches you just what the plays are and where you're at, at least the way that I teach it. I wish it was right every time. Nothing's right every time. I wouldn't know what to do with the five-year notes. If, if you and people do hit me over the head, you're just going sideways in the Bollinger Bands. There's nothing to do there. I am bearish the dollar. How could you not be with lower highs, lower lows, but it's terribly oversold. You see that? You're not embedded. It either embeds and then I figure out a way to get short again, or it corrects from here and I'll take another look at it. But Oversold doesn't excite me, it's overbought. Buying into a Bollinger Band doesn't, and you're not embedded. I wait for the setups. You know, that's the hardest thing for you. I have some people that write me all the time. They want me to make a trade for them or a trade recommendation. I don't trade for anybody. A trade recommendation every day in something for them. It doesn't work that way. I wait for the setups. All right, and even when I get the setup, I'm gonna be wrong a certain percentage of the time. No matter how things line up, there is no such thing as perfect. I will share this with you. Generally speaking, the trades that I bet, bet, bet heavy on are the ones I lose on. And the ones that not, that's it. So I had to train myself not to over bet, to spread it around if, if you're gonna make investments that way. Got it? You've got to have self-discipline. Discipline's everything in doing this. Anybody can go to Vegas and put your money on a roulette table or a blackjack deck and whatever you want and go on, play, play those odds. There's nothing wrong. This is a lot of money when you trade these markets, all right? The leverage makes it look great because the margins are small, but you're getting 90% leverage. It could be your friend and enemy. In the British pound, are we going to get an embedded reading? That becomes the question. We don't have it yet. I saw Jeremy Hunt today do his interview. I think it was CNBC. Uh, it's strange because he's much friendlier than the IMF is towards uh, what's going on in the UK. We'll see how that all works out. Bitcoin, just sitting on these narrow Bollinger Band. It's at the top part of it. It's not embedded. I'll let somebody else want to own that. Not this guy. In Brent versus WTI, you can see how the two came together here on the 420 level. This market, this is the first challenge of the 100-day average. It's looking as though the bulls are going to win it. First, you're embedded. That's bullish. That's probably now the support at 84.70. I hate, hate, hate on the first challenge of a main moving average becoming a buyer at it. So am I willing to miss those type of trades? I'm going to share this with you. Absolutely because more times than not, they don't work out. And it's all about percentages. Take the name off the chart, play the percentages. Same thing here. You know what makes a great poker player? They know, they know the percentages of what you have in your hand. 
They're not card counters. They know they can look at what's out there. They can beat you almost every time. I'm a terrible poker player, but I understand this game. This is my game. Poker's theirs. Gasoline. Embedded reading. Had the break I was looking for. The rest is history. How much higher? Don't know. But it can go a lot higher. Should you have taken some money off the table on the rally? Ask my paid subscribers what we did or become one. Now natural gas, you know, I'm still in the bear camp in natural gas, but would I tell you to be short when you lost an embedded reading? Another th key event, let's do this. What happened when you lost the embedded reading? Oh my gosh, right here, 2332, you lose the embedded reading. I'm looking for the 18 day average to be hit now before the market makes a new low. Tell me that didn't work out. So these are the percentage plays that I try to come up with for you, try to help you with. If you want to ask about them, come into the webinar tomorrow. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Take it from there. By the way, if you're watching me on YouTube, you see the word join on the bottom of my page on it. Hit it. Become one of the morning people with me. I'm I Rapstein. You have yourself a great day. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Take care.